So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Flawed for 900 quid. Why these are pretty bad. I've been testing these for about three or four months now. On the face of it, it could have been a really good product. You know I'm quite passionate about power meters. I used to work in transducer design for torque sensors and power sensors. I see pedals as a consumable, right? The bearings wear out, the sole plate wears out. As you can see already here, it's already worn a little bit. And the bindings wear, uh, pedals develop play. So I've always said, put your power meter on uh, the crank, even better, put it on the spider because it picks up less parasitic bending, the cranks are indifferent, uh, difficult to instrument and stay away from pedals. However, there are so many different bottom bracket standards now. I've got so many bikes, so many different chain ring standards, so many different spider interfaces. Uh, it's kind of become untenable to have a, a spider based power meter that you can put on all your bikes. Pedals are more versatile and if they can be executed well, pedals is, is the way forward however these are, I think are way off the mark so in this little presentation I'll put some uh, key notes up here on the side so you can follow through because this does get a bit technical uh, we're going to look at the construction of this um, which is one of its I think good points actually it's just like a normal Keo blade and I really like that it's it's pretty elegant in its design actually and its modularity and it's so simple and it's extremely light We'll look at the claims, which is where this really falls down. Just the physical kind of architecture of it also, as well as the accuracy from the power is just so far out. And this claim, this is claiming plus or minus 1%. I've been measuring this at some points, 20% out across one pedal and 10%-ish for two. We'll come to that price. Like I said, I bought this 900 quid. I am talking to the retailer which I purchased it from. I'm trying to find out if, if they're talking to look about it. I know others that have had big, big issues with these and it's not good enough for the, for the, for the money. It's pretty embarrassing. Um, so yeah, we'll summarize it at the start of the video. Cons, all of the above. Pros, low mass. Q factor is the same as normal. There's no pod sticking out like Favero's do. And yeah, it's pretty modular so you can replace the springs and the bindings and stuff. So let's look at the claims first of all. Now I'll just screenshot some of the bits of marketing out in the marketing video. So optimized ecosystem, was it a bike part or some sort of termite residence? Uh, carbon body, a mm, little bit of a lie. It's plastic with you know reinforcement from the injection molding. So it's basically a polyamide nylon is the traditional word for that. I think it's probably PA66 with CF strands in it, so it's injection molded. There's loads of injection molding marks all over it. Accuracy, complete lie. Standard Q factor, now that is true. It's a standard Q factor of 53 mil, which is kind of standard for a road pedal. My main pedal, pedal based power meter for road bike is the Favero Asioma Shi, the Shimano one, and that is a 65, I think. So it's 12 mils wide, wider than this. Now you definitely notice that. Whether it's good for my bike fit or not, um, I'm, I think it probably is for me. So I've got seriously wide stance and a wide hit. Um, aerodynamics wise is not very good, but having said that, Ghana used them to get the hour record and still has the hour record, so it can't be that bad. All the electronics uh, internal in the axle here. Uh, well, the strain gauges aren't, but they're covered with a metal cap. And if you got, you can go onto the website and look at this video, but where the strain gauges are located, there looks like there's only a pair top and bottom and there's not two pairs, which means I believe from that layout, if I think the layout is correct and it's a shear pair, they can't sense pedal sense offset. So they can't tell where you're pressing with your foot. So your foot position or your fourth application point down the axle could give you big errors. And I think that's maybe what's going on here. Uh, unlike the Ferreros, they do have a PCO kind of cancellation. So they're kind of uh, impervious to that. And you, and you get a PCO readout on the, on the MX ones as well. Weight 260 grams, verified that. These are seriously light. Not much more than a normal blade pedal. I used to, my my very first um, pe like road pedals were look deltas. So that's before the Keo ever, ca ever came along. And then I upgraded to the Keo, not the, not the blade version, just the standard version. But I've wanted to get back on the look because it's what I started on. The other thing they keep going on about is this contact surface. And they go through this in the marketing of all their pedals, contact surface. So how much, like surface contact you've got between the pedal body and the cleat. And they say that that's good for optimized power transfer. And they, and they always waffle on about that. Whatever look pedal you look at, power meter or not, they love the fact, they love to tell you that it's a wide platform that you stand on. Now that would be valid if you rode around barefoot or flip flops. If you stand on a stone, 
in carbon sheet. You don't feel the stone. So that kind of analogy shows that this is not really a feature, but they're so pedantic um, about this contact surface thing. I was equally pedantic, and I went and 3D scanned the whole assembly, and I want to prove them wrong. Same with the stack art. I think it's slightly higher than what they've said it is. And if they're going to be picky about weird claims that I don't think really mean anything, I'm going to do something that really doesn't mean anything either. So here's the 3D scans. Now what I've done is I've scanned the pedal bodies uh, using a number of different methods to get the like, most accurate kind of point cloud data and mesh, number of different meshes tried. And uh, scan the cleat, put the assembly together as you would when you clipped it. They say that you basically got whole contact of 705 square mil between the cleat and the pedal. Looking at the scans, you basically only get these little points in red where the two parts actually mate. And that's very telling because it's exactly the same as what you see on the surface of this pedal body after a few months of riding. You get some wear at the edges on this side and on this side. And you do actually, I think, under deformation of your rider weight, you get a bit of wear at the back. But most of that cleat surface has not even been touched by the cleat. Um, most of that pedal surface, sorry. So I think it's a rubbish claim. It doesn't mean anything. So I've gone to equally rubbish lengths to prove it wrong. Um, you're basically contacting on a couple of corners. And I would say the actual contact surface area is about a quarter at best of what they claim. And just to show you those 3D scans on the screen here, the red areas are where you get contact. And looking at this video here with some light underneath it, you can actually see like daylight under there. Um, and yes, when you deform the cleat, when you when your weight's on it, you do deform it a little bit. But the only real wear I've got on this kind of tread plate is from the little rubber um, bung, which they actually patented to basically show the cleat um, placement on the shoe when you come to replace your cleats. But in terms of this contact area thing, I don't, I don't think, I don't, first of all, I don't think it matters. Secondly, the stack height, I've measured it in a couple of different ways, and I came up at, I think, 11.2. They're claiming 10.8, which is pretty low. It's pretty damn good. I didn't get anywhere near 10.8. Now, 0.4 of a mil difference, like, don't get me wrong, that's um, not important. But, you know, again, as a claim, I don't think it's quite true. Anyway, going back to the outdoor data set first, this is where the pedals really fall down. No, let's dive into the data set quickly. Let me just turn my panel, um, because there's a glaring error in this presentation that I've just seen. This is 5% down, isn't it? This is 10 watts in 200, which is 5% dot 10. Okay, that's wrong. But in some cases, it's down on one pedal by 20%. And this is really quite consistent. And we'll get into the data set in a minute. Um, when you do kind of sustain sprints or anything really high powered, the error kind of goes away and it's really weird what's going on and the cadence is all right. So this is an outdoor ride. It's not so structured. There are quite uh, a few stops and starts at junctions and stuff but it's your typical outdoor training ride uh, mostly zone two with some sprints thrown in now where the pedals really struggle is at kind of a low output steady state uh the look really does lag behind uh other things i've tried and this is my venerable quark and i've benchmarked this against kicker i've benchmarked it against uh Favero's, and i rely on the quark i have done for about 10 years now and you can see, uh, just the, looking at the average power here, it is 10% down. So the average power of this little steady state effort, which is around three minutes long, is 20 watts down, which is 10% in 200. Like, this is this is bad. Um, the patterns are the same, the transients are the same, but the power average power is, is low. Uh, and then if you dive deeper into the data, we find that basically what's going on is the right pedal and it's always the culprit this pedal is something going on with this pedal and i've uninstalled it retalked it followed the instructions checked the firmware is up to date uninstalled it reinstalled it a number of times talked it up to spec is it something to do with my q factor i do have i know for a fact i do have a, a very wide pedal sensor offset on my right leg it's just something to do with my hip and my knee i get a very sort of wide force offset on the on the right leg that's validated by the kind of shimano by fitting vector analysis thing and the favero assiomas which do pedal sensor offset tell me exactly the same thing uh the uh, sorry there's the vero mx pedals the mountain bike ones and we can see here the right pedal on the look is just 20 watts down uh whereas to be honest the left and right from the cork are exactly the same to to point oh six watts and the Keo is almost the same as well, 122. So bear that in mind as we go through. 
Uh, let's just have another look, little look at another kind of lowish power steady state effort. Again, the yellow line is trending the same, but it's always underneath. And it's this orange line, which is the right hand pedal of the look, which is really pulling it down. Um, 93 watts and the others are all about 110. Um, so it is low and it, it always struggles at these lower kind of steady state uh, efforts. Now let's look at a, a sprint quickly. This is kind of a sustained sprint. This is about 45 seconds, averaging around 675 watts. Um, it, it, it picks up in the sprints and you can see here that the average powers are more or less bang on. Like when you take sprint powers over short durations, it's very hard to compare averages because it is a very spiky uh, kind of data set. But that right pedal is contributing, seems to be contributing the same now to, to the others, pretty much. That's very repeatable outdoors. So let's look at the next data set, which is the indoor stuff, which is a bit more controlled. And we're in herb mode some of the time, and there's less kind of stopping style. So like I said, I removed, reinstalled, and talked to spec before I went on the indoor trainer, checked the firmware. And again, the average power is about 10 cent down. Uh, again, worse at low powers, zone one, zone two, and it's the right pedal consistently down about 20 watts in 100, 20% on steady state efforts. Sprint efforts are much better matched. So looking at that data set briefly, now on the face of it, you can see it's a much more controlled kind of structured training ride, I guess, on the trainer. A um, little warm up at the start for about five minutes. Again, that yellow line is trending quite far underneath the average. Um, the trainer in use here is a Kifka on Zwift. Um, that is slightly under the cork. Uh, you, you'd kind of expect that because it's downstream of any chain losses. Marginally under the cork, not to worry about that. It's always the same, but the look is about 20 watts down again. And again, if you look at the right and left, it's the orange line here, which is the right pedal of the look. It's 94 on the left leg and 72 on the right. Um, whereas the cork is Okay, it's a little bit low on the left, hit it. Now a little bit low on the right, but it's uh, that's a massive difference. That's tw over twenty watts in a hundred. That's twenty percent. It just it's, what's that like? Me not being clipped in? I just don't know what's going on with the right. Uh, we've got two six eight on the look, two eight seven on the cork, and two eight three on on the on the kit on the trainer. So again, it's more or less twenty watts down, which is ten percent this time. And again, it's that right pedal. Let's just have a look at the, the last little sprint here to see what happens. So we're going up to 1200. Oi, oi, will he wave in? And more or less, they're all lining up. So it's 981 for the look and 982 for the quark. So like I said, in the sprints, the sort of problem goes away. So I don't know what's going on. And the left and right problem goes away, as you can see here. But in the other day, it says that this, this left and right problem here in another little sprint, um, slightly more sustained sprint. In this one, the right pedal is 60, 70 watts lower than the left, <laughs> whereas the cork kind of lines up. So no idea what's going on with this right pedal, but it's something not right with this sensor uh, because normally my left and right legs are just fairly damn perfectly matched. I'd have to say I've never, I've never been out sort of like 51, 49 and um, pedal imbalance on pedal-based power meters and the watt bikes and stuff like that. So just for reference sake, to show you the left-right balance on another system, so the cork doesn't actually give you a true left-right balance. It's more of a prediction because it's all actually being centered on the right-hand side. But here's the data set of the cork versus Favero Asioma Shimano, the dual-sided versions. And you can see, first of all, the global average is within about a percent. But then if you look at the left-right power, you can see left and right is very well balanced on the Faveros and same on the cork. So it's definitely a left-right problem on those Kios, on the look pedals. You can say zooming into this bit as well, left-right is pretty well balanced on the Faveros, which is a true left-right reading and same as it is on the cork. So it's not my wonky legs. Uh, just to represent that, I've shown you this different data set. Anyway, I think it was this test or the next one. I oh, know it was the next one. So I did uh, another indoor test, um, but before this test, I'm gonna show you, I actually changed the shoe so I've got two pairs of shoes with look cleats on. I'll change to a different shoe. This is a Giro shoe. And I basically put the cleats in a random position. This is a shoe that I've used Shimano cleats on for years. It's a Giro Empire. But I put some look cleats on it. And I didn't even look where I was putting them, if you'll excuse the pun, to try and like maybe see if this is a pedal center offset issue. Because like I said, I don't believe this is sensing PCO. It could be sensitive to any parasitic bending strains. However, 
the same trend overall is present. And this is where the pedal really struggles, at least kind of lower power steady state efforts. Um, let's just zoom into a random section here. I think this is just a free ride on Zwift, so there's no uh, mode going on. That yellow line of the, the look is 20 watts down, 15 watts down in this section. Yeah, I, I can't recommend these pedals. They're just not, I just think they're not fit for purpose. And like I said, I'm talking to the retailer where they were purchased. I'm not sure if I'll, where we go with it. Uh, I, I genuinely like the pedals for the, for the architecture and I, I, love, I like riding look again, quite like the cleat system, but it's useless. So I've since basically December not ridden these pedals. As you can see, they're in really good condition. Um, they've been left indoors. Um, yeah, they've been on the trainer. I just use them on the trainer, but it's such a shame because they have they do have benefits over the the Asio Mishimano, like the Q factor. You're not forced to have that wider Q factor. There's no pod. Save your money. I wouldn't buy these yet. Let's see what looks say. Stay updated on Patreon to to find out the update of any news and what happens with the pedals. Anyway, cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.